Hey everybody, new school comic book reviews. Okay, today we're going to have a look at the 1987-88 miniseries Black Hawk, written and drawn by Howard Chaikin. This was done in the same prestige format that uh, Dark Knight Returns was in and Longbow Hunter starring Green Arrow was in. And it was uh, pretty much a pretty much a big hit. I want to say uh, right around the same time, DC also did a miniseries um, written and drawn by Howard Chicken for The Shadow. And both that and this were uh, spun off into uh, ongoings. Now, I'm not a, a super expert on the character. I had to kind of um, uh, look up a couple of things to make sure I had it at least right in general in my mind. Uh, basically, the characters go back to the Golden Age. They were uh, air fighter, fighter pilots in World War II, and they were made up of different guys um, from different countries, you know, Poland, you know, uh, Russia, Sweden, etc. And this guy here, Black Hawk, was the leader, and the team was called Black Hawk as well. And they also had their kind of Chinese mascot kind of cook uh, character who we'll talk about in a minute uh, named Chop Chop. And, and basically that was it. They go around, they fight the access and so on and so forth. Now, originally it was published by, um, uh, now I'm drawing a blank, Quality Comics, which is the same company that used to own uh, Plastic Man. And then DC bought the rights in the... 50s, I believe. I thought they had bought the rights in the 60s, but like I said, I looked it up and they actually bought the rights in the 60s. I also thought that Black Hawk was published by Fawcett Publishing, but no, it's quality uh, comics. Uh, anyway, DC bought the rights and kept publishing it for a while through the 70s, I think, early 70s maybe, and they ended up canceling a comic book. They had a short revival in the early 80s, then they did this series, and then after this series was a hit, they um, did uh, they did the ongoing in the early '90s, and let's see here. And I want to say, now I do, I do, I am aware that they had did in the '60s. They tried to revamp the team as a kind of uh, campy superhero group uh, that didn't really catch on. And I know the early '80s revival was because there was a rumor going around that Steven Spielberg was interested in possibly doing a movie version. Uh, that obviously, of course, never happened. But um, you know, it's it's one of the mainstays, or it's it's one of the things they every so often you'd see a, a new version of it. I know a version of the Blackhawks showed up on the Green Arrow TV show uh, about a year or two ago, and they were kind of remade as a kind of Blackwater, you know, mercenary group or whatever. But uh, but that that's basically the overall kind of premise of the comic. Okay, I wanted to briefly touch on the character of Chop Chop. Uh, here's what he looks like in this comic. Okay, and you know, it's no big deal. He's just, uh, you know, just a normal Asian dude, a normal Chinese dude or whatever. But in the original version from the 40s, uh, the character was very much a, a, a racial caricature. He was a sympathetic character. He was their buddy. They're a funny little comedy relief guy, their sidekick, their mascot. He was kind of the cook, but uh, the way he was depicted, you know, he had the giant bit buck teeth and the eyes. He had this little ponytail with a little ribbon in it, you know, and uh, he had that uh, stereotypical speech pattern, that sort of miso very, very sali sali type of thing. And like I said, he was kind of this character, uh, comedy relief character. Over the time, they've kind of uh, evolved that character. I have read a couple of the early 80s comics where he was the same guy. He was still the mascot, still the sidekick, but they got rid of the, the like I said, the, uh, you know, they got rid of the buck teeth and, and the ponytail and all that sort of thing. And he, they drew him to look more like a, a normal Chinese person and, you know, he didn't have the 
the messed up pidgin English speech patterns and things like that. And here, and like you said, uh, as you can see in this one, he's a full-fledged member of the team. He's a normal person. He's uh, he's the equal of the other guys in the group. So I, I just wanted to like kind of sort of point that out. Where, you know, you know, I don't know. You, we could do a whole video on how there are all kinds of racial and ethnic uh, stereotypes that you know used to be kind of the norm. You know, back in the 40s and whatnot, that you know just wouldn't fly in a more modern time. But I, I thought that was worth pointing out. Now, the plot of the comic, the comic book is actually kind of complicated. Um, it's World War II, the war's raging on, and as uh, you know, as the story starts, uh, Black Hawk has kind of been grounded, and his team is on the verge of splitting up, and people are trying to get him. Uh, thrown out of the country. This is mostly due to um, the actions of one particular senator named Senator Hightower, who's this kind of uh, kind of Joseph McCarthy-ish type uh, person, uh, you know, red baiting, you know, anti-communist. Um, I hate everyone. Uh, trying to get him thrown out of, out of, you know, trying to get Red uh, Red Hawk. Well, actually, I think they actually call him Red Hawk at one point. Uh, you know, just basically saying that, you know, oh, no, uh, uh, Black Hawk is a communist. We need him thrown out of the country. And like I said, it's actually kind of hurt Black Hawk. And he's actually trying to go through all sorts of bureaucracy and uh, politicians and the military to get his team back together so he can, you know, go back and uh, you know fight the axis and now uh, also what has just happened we don't see this but it i guess has happened right before the story picks up there's a jewish gangster who has stolen a package uh from somewhere and on the you know he was hired by somebody to steal this certain item and he finds out that the real bosses behind the scenes are the germans so he decides he's not going to sell it He's not going to give it to the Germans. He's going to sell it to either the Americans or anybody else he can sell it to, as long as it's not the Germans. And it's not long that we figure out that it's actually a prototype for an atomic bomb. Now, also into this is a British actor in Hollywood named Death Mayhew, who is kind of this Earl Flynn type guy uh, that does these swashbuckling movies and whatnot. But he is actually a Nazi sympathizer, and he is parlaying his fame into favors and things like that. But he, like I said, he's working as a double agent for the Nazis. Also into this mix is a woman named Reba, who's this failed Hollywood actress who's kind of trying to work every angle that she can. You know, it looks like maybe she's with the good guys, but then she finds out she she's with the bad guys. But is she with these bad guys or is she with these bad guys? And now Blackhawk ends up teaming up, like I said, as he has to go through all this kind of craziness and espionage and military bureaucracy and who's got the package, what, what, what. He teams up with this woman named Natalie Reed, who is an American, and she's a, a, an engineer and a mechanic, and she's also a pilot herself. And she actually is a, she's an American, but she actually is a communist sympathizer. So, and they kind of, you know, butt heads, you know, uh, Black Hawk is somebody who was raised in Russia or, or Poland, and he's actually renounced the Communist Party and he's working for the Americans and she's working for the Americans. She's an American that, you know, like I said, is a communist sympathizer. But of course, during World War II, uh, America, Britain and uh, Russia were all allies at that time. So they're all kind of like butting heads at the same time they're allies or whatnot and there's a lot of back and forth as we jump from location to location scene to scene uh, there's double crosses there's duplicity there's espionage there's action and that's basically uh, what the uh, premise of the story is now plot wise there's a lot crammed into these three issues um and howard chicken doesn't really doesn't i should say make it real easy for you like i said there's lots of jumping from scene to scene and um the story's all done by uh dialogue 
there's exposition um, in there, and there's backstory in there, but you only can pick it up through, like I said, through the characters talking to each other. So there's no, uh, there's no, uh, what do I want to say, no third person narrative going on. There's no um, captions that say, here we are in Berlin, or here we are in Russia, and there's no Blackhawk who is blah blah such and such. You really don't get that in this uh, particular comic. So you kind of have to read it a few times to kind of get everything that's going on. Um, it's kind of clever, um, and it's it's you know it's quality writing. I don't want to say it's too smart for its own good. It's not that, but it's it's a guy that's clever being clever. And it mostly works, but like I said, sometimes it's hard to follow and you have to kind of go over it again. One thing he likes to do a lot is start a scene where two people are talking and you don't really know who's talking or where you're at. You might see a, an exterior shot of something and the dialogue's going on and on and on. And then you get to uh, who the people are, you know, who the people are that are talking. And uh, like I said, sometimes that's confusing. And at one point, here, let me show you a good uh, a good example. I actually had to bookmark this, where here we are with a scene with Black Hawk and Natalie Reed. They're having their dialogue, and we're transitioning here from Moscow to... Uh, back to the states I believe but here he is he's talking to some Soviet he's dealing with Soviet military guys he's talking to Natalie and they're still talking and we're pulling back or they don't go to Moscow I'm sorry they actually go to Germany all right where are they here yeah they go to Germany and they're still talking and they're still talking and then at one point the dialogue changes right here to a couple other people talking while the scene where the uh, visuals are the same but the people talking has changed and now we find out the people who have been talking are Reba And Death Mayhew. And the thing is, the point of the point is, there's a lot of this. There's a lot of here's something going on. You don't quite know what's going on until you get halfway into the scene, and then you figure out what's going on. And that's the same thing with uh, with people's backstories and history and and what has previously happened there's not a whole lot just laid out there for you some of it is and that's another uh interesting thing that, I, that we'll probably talk about a little bit more some of it's done because you get to see uh shots of newsreels and magazine and newspaper articles and things like that kind of fill in some of the gaps for you but like i said it's um it's really um it's really you really have to think about it to to get everything that's going on as far as the plot and dialogue and things like that. Now the art is really interesting. Uh, you get a lot of what uh, Howard Chaykin was doing at the same time over an American flag, where it really plays up the whole sense of uh, design and layouts and stuff like that. And it's just really interesting to see how he's able to make the panels. Whoops the panels and the visual storytelling work in a very I don't want to say comic booky type way but it's on one hand you're very aware that it's lines drawn on paper but at the same time uh, it's almost cinematic the way that the words play off the visuals and it's cinematic in a different way than we're used to thinking of uh, cinematic in comic books these days where people talk about widescreen action and you get a lot of horizontal uh, layouts and things like that 
Uh, here it's cinematic in, you know, I, I don't have the words I, I want to um, I want to say, but like I said, it's it's how the uh, how scenes transition, how they play out, how the dialogue works along with the um, how the dialogue works with the characters and with the visuals, and how it uses close ups and far shots and things like that. Uh, another interesting thing is you get a lot of, uh, like I said, reproductions of like magazine covers right here. This is live instead of Life magazine and newsreels and newspaper articles and things like that. Uh, oh, let's see here. Ah, I'm wrecking the comic book. I'm sorry. But here, here's some. Here's some clips, fake clips from the newspaper. Oh, this is actually kind of funny, just to digress. On this page, you're talking about all the uh, publicity they, they have to do and propaganda and stuff. And here's Natalie kind of lampshading the fact that female heroes have to wear these kind of skimpy outfits when she actually does wear her actual outfit you can see here, uh, let me find uh, one that doesn't give too much away. But you can see here, she's basically just wearing the same thing that the guys are wearing. So, I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, but back to the point I'm making, uh, you kind of get to see a lot of things like Signal Magazine. And then here's the inside of Signal Magazine. that kind of uh, give you a glimpse into what was going on in the world of the characters here. And it's also kind of like what the uh, uh, Watchmen series did, you know, uh, roughly around the same time, in, in a slightly different way, but like I said, it kind of, here's some fake news reels. It kind of helps flesh out Of uh, the, uh, like I said, the the world that the characters are in, and it kind of helps you with the uh, kind of plot and whatnot. Oh, uh, this is uh, here. Is Black Hawk a red? Let me see here. I think we got another one. Well, this is just a more, uh, this isn't uh, so much media as much as it's just an example of kind of the, kind of, uh, you know, just interesting design work and graphic work that Shaken was doing at that particular, during that particular era in comics. So, okay, so... Okay, now if there was a drawback, I'd say one drawback is uh, the the concept. It's supposed to be that Black Hawk is this guy, but it's also about his team, and the rest of the team really doesn't get uh, much. Uh, doesn't doesn't really get much development. They're they're barely in it. It's Black Hawk. We get to see a little bit of Chop Chop, but it's mostly Black Hawk and Natalie Reed. And if I um, had a complaint about this uh, about the series. It would be that that the rest of the team really doesn't get any development or, or barely any mention. I mean, they're there and you know they're there, but it's mostly you know the Black Hawk show, and that's what I probably would have liked to have seen out of uh, out of the comic more about the actual team and about how they operate as a fighting unit or whatever. There's there's some of that, but I think there just could have been more of it. Uh, but anyway. Uh, yeah, uh, a really solid comic book. I don't give a lot of, I don't always do like ratings or anything like that. But if I were, I'd say out of five stars, I, it's a solid, solid three and a half, maybe four. Uh, it's smart. It's quick paced. It's clever. You got lots of very interesting visuals. And, um, and again, if you want to look at how comics work as a medium, uh, that's again, how words and pictures can tell a story in a particular way, I think this will be a good, um, it's a good example to look at. Okay, so that's it. I got to thank you very much for listening, and you have a great day.